Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another webinar of Parenting Tips. Uh, each week, we prepare different materials that we consider might help you with this beautiful responsibility of being parents. We appreciate your company and interest to improve what you already probably doing in a great way. So welcome. Um, well, probably the least favorite part of parenting is discipline, right? But yet it's a, a good foundation for, for discipline is incredibly important to keep parents uh, from feeling burned out. Uh, many parents who use traditional discipline and, and punishment methods often share how terrible, exhausted, and guilty they feel at the end of the day for all the yelling, nagging, and lecturing. But is that enough to raise a child who wants to behave? That's the question for today's discussion. But first, uh, let's think of what do you find most challenging when disciplining their, their children. Please use a chat to share your thoughts or just reflect, reflect on it. It might be difficulties saying no maybe or establishing functional boundaries, uh, having faith in yourself and in your own ability to be a good parent. Uh, this could be particularly difficult because you won't know whether you've, be, you've succeeded until it's, it's much too late to do anything about it, right? But the important thing is that you're here today wanting to know more, so give yourself a pat on the shoulder. In the early 1960s, psychologist Diana Bombrin determined that, that parenting fell on a spectrum of primarily two dimensions. On, on one side, responsiveness that refers uh, to the degree to which a parent responds to a child's needs. And on the other side is demandingness, that is the extent to which a parent expects and demands mature behavior. Take a look at the characteristics of each parenting style and try to identify your own. Thinking about your parenting style might, might help you reflect on your choices and also to compare yours, your own parenting style to your partner's. The ideal thing is to have a congruent parenting style uh, or the same if possible. If you're asking yourself, what is the most effective one? Well, researchers, researchers have consistently found that, that authoritative parents tend to raise children who are more self-reliant, uh, socially accepted, academically successful, and well-behaved. This is not a judgment on parents who are not authoritative. It's simply what the available evidence indicates, okay? So, Child behavior problems are not a sign of insubordination, disrespect, or rudeness. They are just red flags that you're probably unintentionally ignoring. They are telling you that your child is seriously struggling to meet your expectations and that he or she doesn't know how to move forward. This is the central premise of all collaborative and proactive solution models of treating challenging behaviors. When we keep this in mind, it's easier to empathize with the child's needs and to be able to identify the triggers. So what is positive discipline? Positive discipline is an authoritative method focus on encouragement and problem solving, where parents clearly communicate what behaviors are appropriate, which ones are inappropriate, and what the rewards 
for good behavior and the consequences for bad behaviors are. This model was developed by Dr. Jane Nelson, who is a licensed marriage, family and child counselor and the author of Positive Discipline. Positive Discipline, you, is, positive discipline does not use yelling, spanking or severe punishment. In, in this chart that we have here, we can compare and contrast positive discipline versus punishment. On one side, uh, positive discipline is based on the reassurance that it's okay to make mistakes because they are considered as learning opportunities. And on the other hand, punishment labels a kid as a bad child rather, rather than labeling the behavior itself. Positive discipline is a parenting philosophy based on encouragement, empowerment, and mutual respect. It supports parents in finding solutions to misbehavior rather than uh, using or relying on, on, on punishment. Discipline is all about guiding children being neither permissive or nor punitive. It's trying to find the balance between, between those two sides. So what are the key principles of positive discipline? It is kind and firm at the same time. It helps children feel a sense of belonging and significance. And it is effective in long term. This method relies on a high level of communication. The, the parent explains everything to the child they will go over what behaviors are working on, why and what the consequences are. The parent maintains a warm but firm tone and encourages the child to make choices that make sense. Also, it teaches valuable social and life skills for good character and it invites children to discover how capable they are and to use their personal power in constructive ways. The techniques involve encouraging the behaviors you would like to see continue and discouraging the behaviors that you would like to see stop. Whether you're trying to increase or decrease the, likely, the likelihood of a behavior, you maintain, it's important that you maintain a positive, respectful relationship with your child while disciplining them. Some tips to accomplish this approach, and you can find numerous resources on the web. We posted a couple on the, on the, on the counselor's website for, for you to access. Uh, they have multiple techniques, uh, but we I tried to gather, uh, I would say the fundamental to, to, to start in, uh, implementing this approach at, at home if you're interested. Number one is instead of pointing out what the child did wrong, show the child how to set things right. Instead of saying, for example, don't hit or no hitting, try to say, uh, use your words or act nicely. When you say don't hit, it, it doesn't give the child any information of what he or she should be doing instead. Without that knowledge, they, they may just end up going on with the original plan to hit their friend or their sibling or may choose to go with some other option which is equally wrong, like shoving or insulting the other kid. So in the, now on the other hand, if you catch the child after the incident, try to convey the message that what they did was wrong and give them an out. For example, you could say, uh, that was not a good choice. We don't hit our, our brother or our sister or siblings, or we don't hit our friends. Uh, do you want to say sorry and make, I don't know, Sam, for example, feel better? And if your child is not ready to say sorry, because children sometimes need time to process and then uh, it's better when, when, when the, apology, the, the apology comes voluntarily, right? Uh, 
if, if your child is not ready to say sorry, you can continue with something, for example, okay, so until you are ready to say sorry, uh, let's do this. Let's read a book, let's take a break, let's take a walk. This is sometimes also referred as time in versus the traditional time out, okay? Another tip is uh, whenever possible, offer choices. When you give your kids choices instead of commands, where, where they can use uh, a no response, you're, uh, they, you are less likely to end up in the typical power struggle situation. This tends to avoid no for an answer as well as complete defiance. The choice empowers the kids. The kid, of course, uh, make sure that you're okay with the, with the choices you are offering. Don't give a, your kids a, a choice that you cannot stand by since this will only make you unreliable in their eyes, okay? The choices don't have to be uh, too complicated. Just asking them how they want to do something can be quite effective instead of commanding like, move it, we're getting late, or it's more like a gentle uh, approach like, do you want to wear your shoes first or the jacket? It's like giving them choices so they can feel that sense of control. And that will get them moving with, with a lot less fuss. Um, change the scene, prevent the mis misbehavior from being repeated. Prevention is better than cure, right? Uh, that phrase is cliched for a reason. If you're dealing with a, recur a recurrent misbehavior, look at what can you do to prevent, to prevent it in the first place. Some children do not handle transitions well. Mornings can be a battlefield in some homes because the transition from sleep to a busy day is too overwhelming for children. Spending a few minutes every morning to help kids make the transition can make the rest of the morning go much smoother. If Easy to call your child stubborn, headstrong, disobedient, ill-mannered, etc., and try to discipline them from it. But if you get to the root cause of why they sometimes behave the way they do, you will see that there is a really sweet little child hidden in there who may not need any discipline at all in the, in the traditional sense of the word, okay? So, um, Set clear expectations and boundaries and be consistent. We have talked about consistency so many times before. Make sure you are consistent in your discipline. Your child needs to know what is and is not acceptable. And they judge that by what was and wasn't okay yesterday and the day before, okay? Uh, if they're not getting a consistent message, they do not know how to behave that can leave your child feeling confused or insecure. Try to keep the same schedule every day. That means, you know, having regular meal times, class times and bedtimes, as well as times when your child is free to have fun. When, when, when you have to make changes, it helps to warn your child in advance. This can prepare them for a slightly different routine and hopefully prevent a scene. For a major change, such as a move or a new sibling or, or a death, give the child an understanding of what, what is, what's happening. Children thrive on routines. Remember that. If they know what's coming, they're less likely to act out. And, and, and hey, just think, you also behave better if you know why your spouse had a hard day at work, right? So... Uh, use single word reminders or questions or state facts instead of ordering or demanding compliance. Uh, let's think of a usual situation. For example, children walking out of the bathroom and, and leaving the lights on. Normally we will bark, switch off the lights, right? And they will sometimes follow the instructions. Sometimes they will counter that you will sit, switch off the lights or, or, or may come with a defiant no or worse, they just ignore you. Anyway, just saying, for example, likes in a normal casual tone can make a huge difference. They already know. What do you mean by that? Because you have been repeating the instruction over and over, you know, for a million times. 
just use the single word to say in the tone of a friendly reminder. And most of the time it, it works. Door can be, you know, get the door shut or car gets them to stop pulling around and, and walking toward the car. Dishes might, may mean like get, get the dishes, uh, put the used dishes in the sink, you know, and so on. You can also use a question technique instead of shouting, go put your shoes back on the shoe shelf. And now that we all have like a shoe shelf on the entrance of our doors, right? Uh, a simple question like, hey, where did you put your shoes? Get the job done with a lot less resistance. Um, similarly, stating facts helps too. When, when washing hands, for example, if they're fooling around, wasting water, just state water is wasting and they will be more likely to wash your hands faster than criticism like you are wasting water or ordering them, wash your hands fast. And this really works because when I go into the bathroom, uh, with, when we, uh, and, and at, at school and children were there washing their hands uh, and we said, we, 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 we watch them, you know, playing with the soap, with the foam in the, their hands. Just a friendly reminder like, hey, remember to say water. It's just enough and they move, uh, they quickly finish what they're doing. Okay, so I can testify that it really works. Let the children uh, face the consequences, natural consequences, and not made up consequences to, shoot, to suit your needs. This one is my favorite because it has, be, it has proven to be very effective. A natural consequence is anything that happens naturally with no adult interference, okay? Uh, when you stand in the rain, what happens? You get wet, right? When, when you don't eat, you get hungry, right? So some parents are more familiar with imposing a ton of made up consequences that suit their convenience to get their child to do what they wish. For instance, uh, if children do not finish their dinner, they do not get to watch TV, for example. When you look in, in, into it deeply thought, it is not a natural consequence. It is just something made up to get them to comply. It's more like a threat, right? Uh, even though natural consequences often help children learn responsibility, there are times where, where, of course, natural consequences are not practical. When the child is in, in danger, of course, adults cannot allow, allow a child to experience natural consequences of playing in the street, for example. Uh, when natural consequences interfere with the rights of others, like throwing rocks to another person in the park, when the results of children behaviors do not seem like a problem to them and the natural consequence will adversely affect their health and well-being. For example, it, it does, does not seem like a problem for some children that if they don't take a bath or if they don't brush their, their teeth or if they don't do homework, right? Or, or, if do, or, or if they prefer to eat tons of junk food. So in that case, uh, natural consequences are not practical. At school, we use a responsive classroom approach, which considers logical consequences as a tool to help children see the connection between their behavior and the effect it has on others. So the intention of logical consequences versus punishment is to help children recognize the effects of, of their actions and, that, and the development of internal controls. What is the underlying belief? that children want to do better and can do better with reflection and practice. We've seen this improve a lot since we implemented the responsive classroom approach at school. The teacher's approach that in this case will be the parent's approach and tone uh, is rather than being reactive, using a calm voice and a respectful approach. Na nature of the consequence is related to the behavior. It's reasonable for the child to do. And the message we're sending is that the damage done, not the child, is the problem, okay? In the punishment approaches, the child is labeled as, as if she or he is a problem. Logical consequences respond to three main characteristics. They are known as the three R's for logical consequences. They are respectful. The words and tone of voice communicate respect for the children. Focus is on the behavior rather than on the child's character. They are related. The consequence is directly related to the children's actions. 
and they are realistic. The consequence must be something the children can reasonably do and that the parent can follow through on. If you want to know more about this, we posted some additional resources at the counselor's website. We have the basics of positive discipline and the surprising secrets to raising a well-behaved kid. There are very helpful uh, uh, tips and suggestions that you can uh, go through and see and get what you, you can uh, get what you need from there. So now I would like you to uh, use this two minute action plan for fine parents for our quick contemplation questions today. Um, I would like to ask you, what are some of the positive discipline techniques that are in your toolkit? Which ones do you use often? Which ones should you be using more of them? Did you learn of any new technique today from this presentation? Take a moment to think them through so they become a part of your toolkit going forward. And uh, think of the last time your kids pushed their buttons. What could you have done differently? Will any of these techniques help you handle it better? What can you do now to remind yourself to use one of these positive discipline techniques next time the same situation occurs? Okay, it's just some questions to reflect on about what we discussed today. And I wanna close with this quote from Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. And I think that's why you are all here today, right? Because you are trying to become better parents. You are amazing parents already, but things can always be done like, you know, in a better way. So now let's open the chat for questions or comments, you can unmute yourself if you want to comment or, or add something. So as I mentioned before, um, we, are, we are implementing since last year, the responsive classroom approach in, 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 in at school. And uh, um, they refer to logical consequences as they, they classify them, for example, uh, they have uh, the break it, fix it, reparation, uh, the loss of privilege and the, the timeout, but not as a, the regular timeout that we, that that is uh, used in the punitive model. It's more like a timeout to reflect, to take a break, to calm down, to think about what choices can I make. It's a it's a positive timeout where where the student is encouraged to think, to reflect, to calm, to use strategies, and then come back and join the group. So we've seen, we haven't measured it statistically or anything like that. I, I think that we should do that because uh, I've noticed a lot of improvements in the way our students are relating to each other. So it's just taking some of these tips from the responsive classroom approach and taking them home and seeing how can we implement them. So. I don't know if anybody has something to add. Well, if we don't have questions, that means that everything's quite clear. Of course, if you need more information about these uh, tips we shared today, please. Don't hesitate to let us know. You can communicate by email or you can access 
the Med Counselor's website for more resources. Uh, we appreciate your company today here and uh, we invite you next week uh, and in two weeks we're coming uh, with, with um, more upper elementary topics. If you want something, if you want to learn more about something in particular, please let us know. Uh, you can send us, you can, you can use the, the, the WhatsApp channel from the, the, the parents' WhatsApp groups, and you can suggest there so the class representative uh, can share with us what are your interests and we can approach them directly. Okay, um, we have been selecting these topics based on suggestions that you, you made last year through, through the survey we sent at the end of tr trimester three. But if you feel that you want to know more about a, a specific topic, just let us know, okay? We will be more than glad to prepare material for you all. So thank you very much for joining us today and see you next week. <laughs>